Welcome to lesson 10-4 on space figures. In tonight's lesson, you're going to be able to identify common space figures and really figure out what space figures means. And secondly, be able to construct maps of these space figures. So let's go ahead and get started. In the past, we've been dealing with shapes like these in our warm-up. We have a triangle, a square, a rectangle, and a hexagon. In tonight's lesson, we're going to see what happens when there's more than one dimension to it. So that's what a space figure is. It's a three-dimensional figure. You can see, really, the dimensions of it. And there are five that we're going to talk about, five different types of space figures. The first one is a cone. And a lot of times, you see that it's like an ice cream cone. All right, and you see right away that it has one base. And that's one of those common figures, which is a circle. And it has one vertex, or one place where it comes to a point. So, when you think of a cone, it looks a lot like an ice cream cone. Then we have, for example, a cylinder. When we talk about a cylinder, this is what it looks like. It, this, shape, this figure has two bases. And you'll see that they're parallel, or right one on top of the other. And they are circles. Right, so our bases here are circles. And then it looks kind of like a tube, like a toilet paper roll, something like that, to our paper towel roll. Then I'm going to skip prism for now and go to a pyramid. All right. Now, when you think like the Great Pyramids, this is what they sometimes look like. A pyramid has some sort of polygon as a base. Here, it's a square. But it doesn't always have to be a square. It could be different figures as well. Any um, three or more sided figure could be the base of a pyramid. But again, it comes to one vertex. The way we know that it's a pyramid, though, and not a cone, the big difference is that it has the sides faces that are all triangles. So it has um, lateral faces, that's what they call them, lateral, that are triangle. And then we have a sphere which is that right here. And it's just a three-dimensional circle. And what ends up happening is every sphere has a midpoint right in the middle, and that all the um, sides of that sphere actually go to it, and it's the same distance. Now I'm going to go back to that when I skip to prism, because both of these are examples of prisms, but they have different names as well. This one is actually called a rectangular prism. And I bet you can see why, because if you look, again, it has two bases, but this time they're rectangles. And then the lateral bases here are all um, rectangles or really parallel grids. So when we talk about prisms, they have lateral bases that are par parallel grids. And we can do the same to this bottom one here. This time, if you look, the bases, because there are two, one right on top of the other, is a triangle. So we call this a triangular prism. You see how we just take the word and we kind of just edit euler at the end? That's how they come up with that. But again, these lateral faces are all rectangles. Here's a rectangle, here's a rectangle, and here's a rectangle. So again, that's what makes up a prism. So now we can go ahead and look at this example here. It says, describe the faces and name the figure. Well, if we look at the bases here, we have bases that are circles. So our bases are circles. And again, you can go back to those definitions in the pieces that I said. But because it looks like a tube, we're going to call this a cylinder. There we go. So that's the first piece of your lesson. The next uh, just talking about can you identify the different bases and tell what figure it makes, or space figure. The next piece uses these space figures in a different way. And we, um, when we can take the pieces and unwrap them, we call it a net. And that's just a pattern you can form into a space figure. So what I like to tell my students is think about Hershey's Kiss. A lot of the times you start right at the top and you peel it away. So that you peel away the sides of what it looks like. That's what we do with the space figure. We start at the top and just start peeling away the different sides to see what shapes make it up. So I'm going to help you with this one. We're going to start with the cylinder. And it says, draw a net for it. Well, I'm going to start 
as if I was pulling off this top of it. So if I were to pull open, or just start from the side and pull it open, I have this circle, right? And then, well, I have this long figure. So let's say I cut right, right along here. And what's interesting about a cylinder is if I cut along one side, all right, what you end up with is just a rectangle. And you can see that with a piece of paper. If you've ever grabbed a piece of paper, you can form it into a cylinder by just putting two sides together. And you have your two circles as your bases. But when you pull them apart, you have that rectangle in the middle. And then on the bottom of that is going to be another cylinder, not cylinder, another circle. There we go. So we pulled it apart. So if I were to just try to put this back together, I take that rectangle in the middle, fold it so the two sides here meet, and then just close the tops. And there we go. I have a cylinder. We can do the same idea here with this uh, cube. All right, what we do is just start pulling away. So I can start pulling away the stop piece. So if I pull that away, I'd end up with a square. But if I did the one right below it, well, it's another square. The one right below that in the same line, well, would you look at that? It's another square. And then, well, to meet the other one, it's another square. So I have four squares in a row to make up parts of it. But then I have the side pieces right here. So, and let's see, that touched that first one I did. So there is one square, and then on the other side of that top one is another square. So that's the space figure for a cube. Right, and then here's flipping it the other way. This time they give us the net. Can you tell what shape it makes? Well, I see the two bases are hexagons. And then I see, well, it has one, two, three, four, five, six sides. And that makes sense because one, two, three, four, five, there's six sides to a hexagon. So if you put, um, wrap those sides up and then put those hexagons on top, you'd end up with sides that are all rectangles or parallelograms. Well, if you go back to those definitions I told you about, between cone, pyramid, sphere, um, and prisms, and cylinders, of course, this would meet the idea of a prism, because a prism has lateral faces that are all parallelograms. So because the base here is a hexagon, we call it a hexagonal prism. And there we go. That's what it be called. So that is what our lesson is about tonight. So, you know what, it might be a good idea. If you want to, you can try to do these three um, as, a, as a closing account. So why don't you go ahead and do that? Just try to do these three. So one and two, describe what the bases are and then name the solid. And then three, tell me what figure you have um, from that net. So just take a couple seconds and go ahead and do that. And when you're all done, come back and check your answers. So pause me now. All right, so for number one, I see one base, and it is a circle. And if you take a look, well, we have a base of a circle and one vertex. So this would be a cone. We call that a cone. Here, our bases are triangles. And again, the most bases a figure has is two. And that's with your prisms and your cylinders. If you're talking about a cone and pyramid, it only has one base. So here we have triangles of faces, and the rest of the shape is made up of these parallelograms. So it's a triangular prism. And finally, number three. Ooh, there we go. Smart work. That's a little silly on me. All right, there we go. Triangular prism. So number three. All right, we know our base is this hexagon because it shows us this. And then if we were to lift up at every single side, there's not another hexagon for a base. So that means it only has one base. So it's either a cone or a pyramid. Well, a cone always has a circle um, for a base. So this one must be a pyramid. You call it a hexagonal, because it's a hexagon for a base. Hexagonal pyramid. And this is your lesson for tonight. Tonight we talked about the different space figures and how you can look at faces 
uh, to tell what kind of figure they are and use their nets. You have a terrific night. I will see you in class tomorrow. Adios.